Today in technical drawing, we're going to take a look at a complex construction. We take a look at solid geometry. Our subtopic for today would be surface development. Our instructional goal or the outcome, after completing this course content, the students will have the ability to build the surface development of a truncated triangular based prism. Objectives. One, students will be able to identify and draw the plan front and the true shape of an equilateral triangular based truncated prism. Students will be able to construct the surface development of a truncated equilateral triangular based prism. For you to interpret the steps of procedures, follow it and display or apply the drawing conventions pertaining to surface development of plane figures. Constructing the surface development of an equilateral triangular prism. Now to differentiate between regular and truncated, a regular prism would be a solid as you're taking a look at this figure a regular prism would be a complete triangular solid a truncated would simply be a solid that has a portion of it you would have the top portion being cut being removed at a particular angle examples of surface developments here we are seeing the surface developments of three solids. Let's take a look at the first example here. One of the characteristics that we can identify from this solid is the triangular shape. And based on that, the net or the surface development has a definite shape that represents this solid. Okay? Here in the center, we see a cone and we see the form of a triangle at the top and a circular base shape. So we see the surface development consisting of that circle and of course some part of the net or the surface development represents that triangle. Last but not least, we see this solid here which is a prism and then this prism has the base being a hexagon so the hexagon represents uh, is being represented that is on that surface development so given these three examples consider the net that you will be constructing for today this is the net or the surface development okay Take a look at this surface development. So given this surface development, which of these solids now do you think it is representing? Which of the solids here is this surface development representing? Let's take a look. Do you think it's a cube? Do you think it's a hexagonal prism? A sphere? Is it a cuboid? Cylinder? Cone? Triangular prism? Or do you think it would be a pyramid? So let's go back at the drawing again. This is the surface development for today. So given this surface development, which of the solids do you think it's representing? Right, so the correct solid it's representing would be the triangular prism, right? So the triangular prism is what this solid is representing. Okay, so this is a truncated equilateral based 
prism okay so this is what you will be constructing for today okay guys let us take a look at previous knowledge what do you know so use this checklist to identify whether you're able to complete the following elements okay one are you able to identify and select fundamental drawing tools and materials align drawing paper to with drawing desk construct a title block use basic geometrical equipment to draw plane figures apply the appropriate technique to label plane and solid drawings determine the alphabet of lines apply proper technique to different types of lines construct the alphabet of lines using your free hand apply principles guidelines and techniques for lettering and are you able to read and interpret measurements so indicate whether you're able to complete these fundamental critical elements this would be the final drawing with all the labelings as you see all the specific views um, in terms of the second objective dealt with drawing the front drawing the plan drawing the auxiliary and of course developing that surface as you appreciate from this figure okay so there are many instances when we are asking ourselves how do we relate how do we apply how do we use this concept in real life situations well you could use surface area or surface development to calculate how much paint is needed to paint a house the external walls the internal walls, the floor, the ceiling. In other instances, we can do the application to calculate how much cardboard makes up a box to figure how much frosting is needed for a frost cake to figure out how big a label for a container must be. Okay? those would be some of the applications and of course we can find many others uh, in real life situations so what you're seeing here is the two-dimensional representation of the surface development and you might be asking other than how we apply in real life situation why are we drawing this what do I get at the end when I draw this surface development? Right? We have that, that question and we might be saying, well, I'm not sure why is it that we are drawing, I'm just following instructions and I'll just draw. But it's important that you understand what we can do when we use this concept in real life situations. Okay, so let us take a look. So what you have in front of you right now is the cut out of that um, surface development. And what you're seeing now is that when it is open, when it is flat. When it is flat, of course, we call it a two-dimensional figure. Okay, so this would be a two-dimensional or plain figure. Okay, so that construction allowed me to get the required shape to form if I fold at this area or this demarcated area one we have one line two three four if I fold onto like that I would get a solid so if I was to fold them now I can convert the flat and converting the flat plane figure okay 
uh, converting it from flat to solid or three-dimensional see we can convert three dimension and then of course this is gonna show the true shape or the shape of what that equilateral triangular prism should look like with a portion that has been cut all right this would be the portion here at the top portion here at the top that would be cut or removed okay this happens in real life situation in many um, instances in construction in sheet metal application and, and, and so forth right so we can see now the application of what we do in technical drawing it's not limited to only construction but we see other uses um, in real life situation okay so we see this solid being converted from flat to a uh, three dimension okay so pretty interesting right pretty interesting to see how it is that what you have done before in terms of applying previous knowledge to making something complex as this three-dimensional figure okay so we're gonna take a look at this and i'm hoping that you guys are going to follow each of the procedures that i will outline to get that required uh, three dimension but first we want to get that surface developed okay so please follow be attentive and of course given that this is a tutorial you're able to pause the video you can forward or you can return the video at a certain um, minute to see um, or review any of the procedures so please follow and i'm hoping that you guys can be able to um, apply all the drawing conventions and follow the given procedures okay so let us take a look at the construction now so the first phase setting out the paper place a drawing paper on a drawing board and secure each corner with a masking tape use your t-square to align the drawing paper use four pieces of masking tape to secure each of the four corners okay students we're gonna take a look at how we go about setting out a drawing paper so the drawing equipment that we're gonna use would be first of all we have the drawing table we have the t-square i have what well, we will require will be required to use four pieces four small pieces of, of masking tape this would be one inch wide of course you will be required to have at least one of these um, set squares this would be the 45 degree set square and then this one is referred to as the 30 60 degree set square okay and of course we can also use the ruler as a guide and then for this exercise we're gonna use this drawing paper which by now you should have already uh, prepared this up uh, beforehand and then you would have the title block then the information on that so in this case we are taking a look at surface development the date the scale which is one to one and of course my name here okay so place the place a drawing paper on the drawing board hold the t-square in position ensuring that it is always in contact with the drawing board we bring the paper close to the um, T square so that it comes in contact with the edge of, of the T square. So I have the set square on top of the T square, then I position my paper um, against the edge of the set square with the aid of the T square and the set square, right? So we set the set square as you can see. I align and then I slide it a bit down. So once I have seen that is there, then I use the pieces of tape and we position and we secure them um, and the tape is placed at an angle of 45 okay we move our t-square and we press on it so four pieces and there we have our drawing paper set Okay, so that's the first phase in this process. 
drawing the plan view. Construct an equilateral triangle with 40 millimeter sides. First, use construction lines to outline the drawing and then use object lines to darken it. Draw 5 millimeter guidelines on each of the three points and label them triangle ABC. Draw a 10 millimeter horizontal line above the equilateral triangle. This line will represent X, Y axis. And after you have the outline, use object lines to darken the axis. Step one, we want to construct the equilateral triangle. This time, the equilateral triangle is cut, so I'll just draw a baseline for now. Um, I want to set up in this baseline the equilateral triangle is 40 millimeters. And using my compass, I will draw the equilateral triangle. Guidelines. Remember, I need five millimeter. Sorry, ten millimeters for the x and y, and then to start up the front. Okay. X and y, and then five millimeter. So we have B, C, and A. I want to project these vertically. Drawing the front view, truncated. Use your set triangle to project a vertical line from each of the points, namely A, B, and C in the plan view. Use construction lines. Set off 10 millimeters above the XY axis and draw a horizontal line. Use a construction line. To obtain the front view, demarcate a 60 millimeter height. Given that the front view is truncated, you are to use your 30 60 degree set square to draw a 30 degree angle beginning from the right top corner of the prism or from point C. Use 5 millimeter guidelines to label the front view as BAC and CAB respectively. Darken the front view. And C. Now, the height of this is sixty. Then I use five again. This for the thing. So now, uh, this is the front, this is the front. Let, let me give the first as B, center is A, this is C, 
this is C. Because this has been cut, I don't know yet where these points will be located. I mentioned through uh, the given angle, and the angle is 30 degrees. So from C, I'll draw that 30 degree. Okay? So now, yes, I can direct the front elevation. Because I know the limit for these points. Alright, then I know exactly where these points will be located, so I can uh, set off the 5mm for each of these. And then I can label this will be A, and this here will be D. B sir. All right, this is C, that's A, and that is B. Drawing the true shape of the truncated equilateral triangle prism. Use your 36 set square to draw a 60 degree line from BAC on the front view. Draw the auxiliary axis X1, Y1 at a convenient distance from the front view. Use the plan view as a reference to construct the true shape of the truncated equilateral prism. Set off each of the points using the compass to obtain B1, A1, C1 as the true shape. So what I need to do now is to obtain the true shape of this figure. So I cannot continue without the true shape. So in order for me to obtain the true shape, I need to use 60 degrees now. Because this is 30, this needs to be 60. Project. Establish my X and Y. And establish here. X and Y prime. Use my compass. X and Y to A. Draw it with fast as this is previous knowledge. Next to A, find A, and I set it. B, and I've noticed that B to X prime, sorry, X Y to B is the same distance as this one, as C. So I'll use the same distance uh, to the front for B and as well for C. Alright, just trying to go a bit fast so this is the true shape of the portion that has been cut okay, now yes I can move on to drawing the elevation but first I want to label the points Points X and Y. This here is A. This is C. And this is B. Prime, prime, prime. Okay, so this is true shape. Setting up the perimeter of the equilateral triangular prism. Use each of the points from the front view to draw a horizontal line. 
set of 120 millimeters to establish the length of the surface development. This is equal to the perimeter of the equilateral triangle. Divide the 120 millimeter line into three equal parts. Each should be 40 millimeters long, or the length of one side of the triangle. At each of these points, vertical lines are to be constructed. Identify each point on the base as B, A, C, B. Now I project the perimeter. And the points. Constructing the surface development. Use your compass to set off a radius equal to the lengths of BC, BA, and AC. Position your compass on the base of the perimeter at a point A and scribe an arc. Reposition your compass to C at the base of the perimeter and scribe an intersecting arc to meet the one produced from B. The intersection of these two arcs represents the base of the surface development. To obtain the top section, use the dimensions from the true shape of the triangle B1, A1, C1. Position your compass on A and C and with radii B1, A1, and A1C1, scribe intersecting arcs to obtain the top of the surface development. Use a ruler to darken the outline of the surface development and break lines to represent the folding lines. Draw guidelines for writing the subtopic at the drawing's base. I know that e, the one side is 40, so I need to start and set up 40 three times. Alright, so I'll set three times. This side here. So 40. 40 and 40, that will be 80. And then 120. Alright, so then here I can draw. Once again, I will be doing construction lines. I'm not darkening as yet. Okay, so, so I know that the bottom can be the same as the top. Sorry, the bottom can be the same as in the previous drawing. Okay, because it's not cut. Only the top one will change. So I will use. Uh, let me label first. I will use the same uh, alignment that I have already drawn, which is this. And to the top. It has to be here to the top. Okay, so I know exactly this is the first point B, this is A, and this point here is C. We go back to B again. Alright, so we're going to work with the bottom first. So, what we do, we know. I want the triangle here, so I need to set this dimension A to B. So I find where A is located and I scribe the line. And A to C, sorry, B to C is the same distance, so I'll use the same radius. Okay, then there we have our first point. Section, sorry, one, two, three, four. So this blue one goes to the top. And this one is here. So as this unfolds, it is going to create a point of uh, intersection. So 
one from here to this point and the one from here to there so that should go here there and we go back again okay and then this is the point that we call b all right so let me draw that So B, sorry. So this is B goes up to this point. So this is B, All right? Which is this point. And from here it goes slanted to A. So A is here. Then A go slanted once again to C which is the highest point which is here this is C okay. so this is the point and this is the point okay, it's one straight line and then from here it goes back to where B is located which is here okay so this is goes to the top and then it goes like that so I think I did not draw any guideline for this one which is B. We have already A to C. A to C, which is from the true shape, which is this one. Okay, that's the dimension. So we need now A to B and B to C. So I open to radius A to B. Okay, A to B. So from A, I scribe the top. And then B to C is what I need to do. B to C. Because I already have C, so I need B. And then scribe. And there I should get that thing. So let me draw that as I was sharing. B to A, which comes from here. Alright. If you take a look, it's this A. It goes to here. Because it comes from this vertical. And then C is this point at the top, and it goes down. So please do not get confused. And we should go to C directly. Okay. Then this goes to the top. The D. D goes to, to C. And C goes to B. Okay. So this line here is broken. And now, yes, I can go ahead and I can darken the given thing. Let's darken it. This is broken. This one here is broken as well. Broken lines, that is. Because it's folded, right? And then the last one. And we finalize with this one. This is broken on the dark. Broken because you have a bottom section. Okay, and there we have the required okay, five millimeter. Surface development.
triangular prism number two. Okay, so that is the figure. Thank you very much for following. What we have done is one to lay out the surface development on paper. We have drawn the surface development of a solid during the plan, which is number one. Number two would show the front elevation. Three, the true shape of the surface or that section that has been removed or cut. And last but not least, number four, which is the uh, plane figure or the surface development.